call sheet and armband system at coachingtimesavers.com. So real quick overview, this first tab is where you'll enter your playbook and the positions for your position players, uh, up to 11 players. Uh, the next tab is your armband and call sheet creator. This is where you'll actually create your armbands and your call sheets with just a few clicks of the button. Saves hours after you've made your playbook. And then the next tab is where you'll set up your armbands, what kind of color scheme you want, whether you want your numbers five rows of 20 or one through 100, straight one through 100. Uh, next band or next uh, tab is your actual armbands. Right now, every position says no position selected because in our in our setup, we haven't selected a position to print, so we'll do that shortly. Uh, the next tab is your concepts call sheet, your first one. So uh, we'll get to how that works in just a few minutes as well, just kind of overviewing the system. Uh, the next tab is for your second concepts call sheet. You have up to two in the system. And then the last tab is just a basic call sheet. It's just strictly the plays, what they are, the name of them, and where they're located on the bounds. So uh, let's start going over how to put in some things. All right, so right here on the first tab of your playbook, this is where you put in all your plays that you have. And you can keep adding to it. There's no need to delete it unless you're just not going to use that play anymore ever. Uh, you got up to 400 plays you can list in here. And these plays are not going directly on the armband from here. This is just your playbook that you're going to start creating and building. So I'm going to put play one just as an example. So play one. You might, that might be 121 sweep or whatever it is that you want to run, some kind of screen, whatever. In the quarterback spot, you may actually rename that play the exact same thing because on a quarterback card, you probably want him to know what the actual play is, not just a responsibility. Uh, for your position players, if you choose to print off um, armbands for each position, then for your, let's say, your running back here, you may want to, in play one, instead of writing play one, you may just tell him to run a check down. And so on his card, when he when he when we call out a certain play, his band will say check down, and that's why he's running. So depends on how you want to do your system. Some some coaches, all the position players have the play, and slash what they do, just wherever you can fit in there and make it work. As far as how this works, uh, if I was to put in play one again, I'm an accident. Like let's say I didn't know I already had it in there, and I want to put it in again. If you put in the same play twice, it'll turn red for you to let you know you've already put it in there. And then you can simply just highlight the cell and use the delete key on your keyboard to get rid of it. So that's how you enter in plays. Uh, so, and then to kind of go over these, the green boxes is where you name your positions, how you name them on your team, whether it's offense or defense. Uh, you can write out the whole words, you can abbreviate, whatever you want to do. But this does matter as far as finding it later because when we go to select uh, and set up our arm brand, our arm band, then the, here's where we'll select the armband that we want to print. So whatever you name those green boxes, they're going to show up here in this, in this position spot. So, uh, so make sure you name those positions so it can find it. Uh, to save time, instead of me creating a bunch of plays, to save time, I've already created some. I just hid them, so I'm going to unhide them right now so I can see them. I'll take these two out right here. So let's just say I've made my playbook, and this is all I have. Uh, not a lot of plays. so. Let's just do that. Let's go over to our armband and call sheet creator and start creating armbands and call sheets. All right. Here's how that would work. So on this first setup here, you have a, you have a place to select the play that you want to run. So I could select that I want to run uh, this stretch boundary and I don't have it on here. So I'm just going to do outside runs or just going to put runs out of concept. These concepts right here, where, whenever you add a concept, then this is for your call sheet one. So on call sheet one, I have three concepts right now, and I have quick game, slow screens, and runs. So where that comes from is uh, right there, you'll create your concepts in these yellow boxes. So let's say I, I pick stretch boundary for my first play to put a arm bound under the first section. Uh, I want to tag it, I'm going to tag it as run play. And I'm going to tag it also the second, this is for my second sheet. I can also tag it. I don't have to tag it, but you can tag it with some other concept. I'm going to, I'm going to tag it as, um, we're going to create me a new concept just to show you that again. I'm going to say first, first downs, first down 10. 
and I'm going to put it as we want to run this play. It's one of the plays I want to run on first down town. So, so when I do that now, when I go back to my armband or my call sheet creator, you can see under runs, there's the stretch boundary. Under my call sheet two, under first and 10, there's the stretch boundary. So you're automatically building uh, your call sheet as you select your place. So I could go through here and I could start selecting more plays. Let's just say um, I selected the inside zone. I selected a few plays. Uh, another con another thing on this sheet here, if you don't want the play to show up again, you can change this to, uh, what does it say here? Do, do you want plays to be removed? And so you could say, I want the plays to be removed once I put it. This is for coaches that don't want to put the same play in there twice. Okay, uh, For me, I put it in there as many times as I need it because I may tag it with a bunch of different concepts, so it could be in several different places. But if you put it on yes, you're going to notice this little red box pulls up and it's going to say invalid. Don't worry about that. All that's saying is that now I don't recognize this place because it's taking it out. So if I, if I click on this play right here, stretch boundary is no longer in here to be found. So inside zone is no longer in here to be found. So, but I don't use that person, but some coaches do. So I've made that a feature. So I'm going to turn this back to no. I like, I want the place to be in there in case I need to put them in there again. So now if I click on this play, then their stress boundary is back. Now let's just say I put it back in there. You're going to notice it turns green. That's just to let you know you've already put this play in there once. So you can go find it and say, well, I've already tagged this as a run play. So now I'm going to tag this as, I'm not going to make any more comments. I'm going to say quick game. I'm going to tag this as a quick game. And then that may be the only three things I want to tag that thing under. So I'm going to be done with it. Okay. So now when I go to my call, my call sheet, now stretch boundary is under the runs play and the quick game. It's automatically building your call sheet as you select your place. Now to save time, I'm not going to do a bunch of these. I'm just going to, um, I'm just going to paste some things, uh, some plays and some uh, concepts in here just to save some time. I'm going to paste them. So here I put in my playbook and I've pasted all the stuff. I've already tagged everything. Uh, all these are green because I put them in there multiple times. Okay. So except for this Lynch Colorado, it's only, only in there once. But if I was to put, put in Lynch Colorado again, I'll start typing Lynch so I can find it quicker. If I put that in there again, then they're going to turn green. So that's what the green means. They're in there twice. Let's say you, um, let's say you typed in a play. Let's put play two. You forgot that you're supposed to put it in your playbook and you typed it in. If it turns red, that means it's not in your playbook. So you need to come back over here to your playbook and then put that play in here somewhere uh, so that it can find those position players for that play. So red is no good. Take it back out and go put it in your playbook. All right. So now we've created our we've created our armbands for this week. All right. So I've got those that many plays. So now getting ready to print. So the first thing I'll do is go to my armbands, and you might just do this once. Uh, this is a customizable band, so I don't know what colors you want to use. So you, you get the option to make your bands here. So I'm going to make my, right now if you look, it still says no positions selected. Okay. So I'm going to go select a position. Let's say I want to print off the quarterback card. So I'll, I'll choose quarterback. And when I come over here, now the quarterback card's pulled up, and there's all the plays. And now we want to make our our specific color rows. Right now, they're all generically white. So you can change them up to help divide the rows. So we'll make the first column, let's say I want the first column to be uh, blue. So blue is number six. So I'll choose number six. I want the second column to be yellow. And then I'm just going to pick a few, co few colors. Uh, let's go that light blue color and I won't have a red column let's do, do that so if I do that then now you see that my armbands have been created okay and so you, once you create once you create your colors for that week make sure all your positions are the same colors okay but the next week if you want to change your armband color scheme up you can okay so um, there's how you change the colors of your armbands and when you do that it's going to also change it on your um, call sheets here and for your concepts so they're, they're listed blue and it finds them and it does it for you for example i want to change that blue i want to change my mind and say well i don't really want that to be blue i want that to be um, orange so now if you do that your armbands your first column is now orange your concept call sheet recognizes that and changes them all to orange for you so you can find those plays real easily 
Uh, going back, um, you may be a five rows of 120 guy. So right now, each row is numbered one through 20. So if you're doing a color system, you might like that better. You can say orange 19 or yellow three, purple four. Uh, you can do that. Some coaches want just a straight one through 100. So if you if you want that system, just change it from one to 20 to one to 100. And when you do that, now it's going to be numbered straight through 100. And your call sheet is going to lose the colors because now it don't need them. So it's just going to be, give you the play where it's at. So uh, Denali 213 is at play 72. And we can come over and look real quick if we wanted to at play 72. Denali 213. There it is. So that's how you set up your armbands for printing and just whatever kind of color format you want. So moving on to the next part. It's a really easy system once you just look it over a couple of times. Uh, going to the call sheet. Let's go back to the armbands real quick. Let's talk about printing and some of your different options in here. In your, in, when you're actually in your armbands, Right now it's set up generically on 12 font and uh, aerial narrow. You can change this whole armband if you want to, all of them. You can change it to a different font if you want to, and they're gonna all change. So you can make it look however you want to. Let's just say that um, you're a coach that don't have 100 plays, you only have 80 plays. So if you don't need that last row, you can come in here coaches and you can grab these last two here and highlight them and then you set a little down arrow you click it and you click don't click delete but click hide you want to hide those rows now you have an 80 armband ship call sheet so you do the same thing over here highlight those two click hide and now you're down to an 80 call sheet system instead of 100 and so if that's the case uh, these columns can now be wider so if you wanted to wide them up then you could really easily just take each one and you can actually copy, select them all at the same time, depending on what kind of computer you're using. But you can select each row, and then you can widen it up just a little bit to give yourself more room for those calls. And you can just play around with it in your printer settings until you find it to fit your armband. But right now, generically on how I have it set up, on these on these bands right here, how I have it set up, they fit in a, in a regular high school size band. So as far as printer, you can click on printer. There's a couple of different ways to change sizes. You can change sizes by manually doing it on the previous, or you can change sizes in here. So when you click printer setups, it's going to automatically come to this tab. Right now I have it set on 50% to make it fit my armbands, but you can change it to 45 if you need to and hit enter. And that thing's going to go a little bit smaller. It's going to keep everything scaled the same way. It's just going to reduce the band uh, just to show you a huge difference. I can do 20% and now I have really, really small bands. Uh, so you probably don't go that small, obviously, but there's how that works. But generically, it's set up on 50%, and that's what fits my bands. Okay. If you if that doesn't work for you, if that if just changing that size number doesn't work for you, then you're going to have to come back in here and manually play with these columns to make it fit your bands. Okay. So you have that option to do so. In my past program, you couldn't do that. What it was is what it was, and you just had to make it work by uh, abbreviating and making things smaller that way. Now you have the option to change anything you want to in here. So that's it on printing that. Uh, going to the call sheets, they're here. I want to change this back to a number system just because I like it. I like to look at it as a as a five rows of twenty. That's what I that's what I use. So five rows of twenty. All right. So we're out here. We have our plays in our call sheet system. It's time for printing. I uh, just want to show you first. If you, check, if you click on print, you're going to see all these blank spaces and all these pages and pages to print. Well, we don't want that. Okay, so here's how you can real quickly set this thing up for printing. I added this. This is new, and it makes it a lot easier. You come over here to the far right, and you'll see this box right here. It says, use this filter for setup for printing. There's a little down arrow right here. All you do is click that down arrow. And then I usually just mask clear all and then select. I only want the rows to have place, only the rows that have place. And when you do that, now your call sheet is shrunk down to size to where your longest plays are. And then now when you mask print, that pulls up that way. Okay. Now, obviously, when you print, you don't want this right here on there. So let's kind of go back and just show how to get rid of that. 
two ways to print. You can either do like your other ones, come in here and select this row, that little down arrow, and hide it. And now when you do that, now when you go to print, it's set up for printing. It looks good. It's ready to go. Okay. Um, next week, if you're doing armbands again next week and you're having to redo things, don't forget, if you redo your armband system, you always want to come back and open that thing completely back up for all rows so that you can make sure you're not leaving any plays off. You do that real easy. There's a little black arrow right there. You click it, and now you're back. Now you click your filter again, and you tell it to select all, and OK. And now you're back ready to plan for next week. So right now on this call sheet, there wasn't any. We didn't get down here to this to this tab. That's uh, because in our in our armbands here, we only got the six. Okay. If I put another call sheet, another tag in here, I'm just going to make up something to show you real quick. Uh, let's just say uh, concept number. Uh, concept number seven and let me go make a play and tag it as concept seven so I'm just going to select a play in the in the red and do stretch field concept seven just to show you in your call sheet what happens so now there's a call down here so if I go back and I, and I go make my set it up for printing I'm going to clear it and choose the ones that just have plays when I do that, now I have my concept number seven down here. So this play, the concept sheets are broken up into six concepts across the top, six across the bottom. And if you don't have any concepts past six, then of course this bottom won't be printed. So there's that, um, how you do that. All right, so that's it. I'll set it up. So concept call sheet number two again. All, there's my second concept start. I have all these blank rows in here. I don't need them when I print. So I just set it up for printing. I click the down arrow, select all or clear all, and then select the only one to pl plays that have uh, rows of plays. I do that. And then I hide this column so I don't have to print it. And then there's my call sheet. So when I'm asked to print, there it is. Okay, there's my call sheet for that second set of concepts. Um, while we're in here, uh, the best way to have your concept page easy to read is to have it set on legal paper. Legal paper. You can, if you don't have legal paper, you can change it to letter paper, but it's going to shrink everything down smaller. When you print that off, it may actually be kind of hard to read. So I bought one pack of legal paper that I use for my call sheets. And then that's it. Uh, as far as setting that up, then you would match next and then you would print. So again, when you get finished with that, whenever you're finished printing, don't forget for the next week, if you do your armbands every week for a different team, you replan, you game, regain plan. I always come in here to your concept call sheet, go to that little black, the little black arrow right there to the right, click on it, and always go back and select all until you've redone all your plays and you make sure that you've uh, got all your plays pulled back up so you can resort that, refilter that back. So I'm going back here before I forget and go ahead and select all. So now all the rows are back and I'm ready for next week's planning. And that's basically it. We come right here to the call sheet, um, your basic call sheet, nothing fancy. It just tells you that these are where these plays are at and that's the numbers. But if you use your call sheets, it's automatically there also. But right here, so for quick game, these are my quick game plays, and that's where they're at. So by just clicking some buttons in my armband and call sheet creator, I can just select plays and tag them. I've instantly created my armbands and call sheets. So once I print off this quarterback card now, if I need a running back card, then I just come back and go over here and select running back or whatever you name that position, and now here's the plays for the running back. You notice the card's different. And then again, let's just say I need to print off a, a X card. I mash X, and then I just come over here and I print off that card. So pretty easy system to use. Uh, if you got questions, uh, email me at coachingtimesavers at gmail.com, and uh, we'll try to help you get it figured out. Thanks for watching. Be sure to share with all your coaching buddies. 
um, systems like this online go for uh, the last three or four I checked. I found I think the cheapest one I found was thirty five dollars a month or one hundred and twenty something dollars a year. Uh, you can buy my whole system outright for way less than that, and uh, I'll do it for like thirty thirty five dollars a year or thirty dollars a year. So it's way cheaper uh, than any other system out there, and quite frankly, more customizable on your end. And another feature too, before I go, is that once you buy the system, I create your copy, send it to you, and then I, then all we gotta do is if you have coaches on your coaching staff that you want to be able to help you go in there and build your playbook. You send me their emails, and I add them for you, and you have your whole coaching staff on the same file working together to help build these things or print them off or whatever it is that you need to do for game days.